Good morning, everyone. I have to show you the garden. Since we got all that rain from uh, the subtropical storm Alberto, my garden has gone crazy. If you remember just the other week, I transplanted these tomatoes. They have pretty much doubled in size in less than a week, guys. It is a major growth spurt for tomatoes. And I even have, if you see, well, let's see if I can find them. Right there, the beginnings of flowers. And I think there's a few up here too. I don't know if you can see that. There's a few up there. So we will be seeing tomatoes fairly soon, I think. Which is a huge yay, because I got this whole row here. And then up against the fence there, I have a whole row of potted tomatoes. So I think we'll do okay. For our first year growing tomatoes successfully here, I'm really excited and I think part of my success is the weather, obviously, all the rain is helping. And the rabbit manure. Every one of these guys have rabbit manure. And the results are absolutely blowing my mind. I'm excited about it, guys. Really super excited. And then the other thing, I planted some... I'm shading it out, but I think you can see it. Oh, I'm going to fall on my butt. These are onions. There's only a few left because my hen brought her chicks in here. They squeeze right through that fence. Well, they're getting too big to do it now, but right after I planted this stuff, they did. And there was nothing I can do to stop it. Now they're getting just too darn big. And that's a yay. <laughs> and then back here, these little green things are... Mexican gherkins. These are gonna be like a cucumber lemony flavor and they only get about that big. So they're not gonna be very big at all. And look what I have here, guys. Look, my corn is up. Look at that. Some of this has gotta be five, five inches back there in the back. It's getting big super fast. Now the key for me will be, um, I got a couple holes here that didn't take and I might put some, um, I might soak some corn seeds to give them a jump start. And I got that from MI Gardener. And might replace some of the holes that did, well, they all had seeds, guys, but I had those bad bratty chicks get in here and I think they got a few. So yeah, I'm dealing with chick rebellion. <laughs> now this winter, once everything dies back, cause it does get really cold here, when I say really cold, I'm not comparing it to up north. Really cold for us is below 20 degrees. And yes, it can get below 20 degrees here. And once that part of winter starts hitting, I will be putting chickens in here and I will let them in here for the remainder of the winter and they will work this ground and they will re-fertilize my ground and I'll be giving them lots of scrap hay from the goat sheds and stuff so they can work it into the soil and they can make compost for me. That's my winter goal. Now I did one of those, I'm just gonna throw a couple seeds in a pot and see what happens. Well, these are watermelons. Oops, there you go. Sugar babies, I think. So they're little round watermelon seedless. And I got two of those coming in. That's a big yay. Nothing, for, I planted potatoes here. There's nothing going on there, so it might work, it might not. If it works, we'll be putting more hay on top. And the hay is full of weed seeds. I know, guys, there's nothing I can do about that. It's all I have to work with, unfortunately. I've tried and tried and tried to get wood chips. Just can't get them back here after that initial load because those guys were really close to our property. Okay. These are zucchinis, yay! There's another one, and another one, and another one. I only planted four. There's only two of us in this household on a regular basis, and I think even four might produce more than what we can eat. If that happens, I'll be making zucchini relish, or I'll see if I can can some. We'll have to figure that out when we have that problem. We're not there yet. <laughs> we gotta get these to actually produce. Last year, we had squash plants and they looked fabulous, but they did not produce. So we have to wait and see. Can you see, we have some weeds coming through and some of it's 
the forest trying to take over again. Some of it's from using hay in the garden. It's got full of weed seeds or hay seeds, I should say. And what I did, I took a lot of the cardboard that was laying over here and in that corner, because I had to clean that corner out of the cardboard, and I'm using it as a blanket mulch around my plants here. And over here, I planted a whole pack of broccoli seeds. We're gonna try it again, and we're gonna try it differently. Instead of trying to start them in seed trays, I just threw them on the ground, threw a quick handful of compost over it, and walked away. In this little patch, I planted a hand, a whole pack of beet seeds. Again, I threw the seeds, scattered them real nice and spread out, and then I threw a handful or two of compost on and walked away. My um, cauliflower is doing really good. That back one's really jamming. My bunching onions, I think I'm gonna have to start cutting some of them. My Brussels sprouts are being eaten by something, but the plants are still growing, so we ride the wave there, guys. My mustard greens will soon be big enough for harvesting. So that's coming along. And look at this. I know some people don't have luck with carrots, but look at my carrots coming in. It is happening, guys. And I got two patches. They're two different types. Over here is the other patch. You see that? So, yay. Thumbs up. We're going to have carrots this year, I hope. So that's a big one. And here's those other tomatoes. Most of these have really shot up during this last rainstorm. Guys, we had a ton of rain. I was worried that the garden would actually get flooded. But it didn't. And we're doing really, really good. So that's good. And it's soon time to plant my loquat. This is a loquat here. And look at that. It looks really nice. This is a citrus. This is soon ready to go out. This loquat didn't make it. The chickens are eating this stuff if I don't watch them. This is my carob trees. I got two carobs that I started from seed. And all these I started from seed, guys. So those are all getting ready to go out. And we're going to try and put a tiny fence around them just so that we don't step on them or mow them over or weed whack them because God knows we've done that here before. I have peppers I planted, but nothing. So I think my pepper seeds are no good. Here's the smallest tomato I have left. And it's just not kicking in yet. Not sure why. Maybe it needs some rabbit poop. <laughs> but that's the garden update. And it looks like I got to soon plant. This is cabbage. See my cabbage? Soon time to put a patch of cabbage in. And this is... I believe this is Swiss chard here. I'm not sure if this is a weed or what it is. Collards, I only have two collards that sprouted. This is not the best method, but it's all I have to work with. I can't run um, like gardening grow lights or anything. So I'm doing the best I can with what I have. And you know, you smile, you grin, you bear it, and you figure something out that will work. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Huh, how did that get all the way over there? Somebody's been messing with my stuff. <laughs> all right, guys, garden update. I'm super excited for these tomatoes. I am so craving a homegrown tomato, I can't even tell you. When we lived down in Plant City, our gardens were established for quite a few years, and um, I was jamming out the tomatoes there, guys. I had 10 foot tall or taller tomato plants with cherry tomatoes, and I was getting over 100 cherry tomatoes off of the plants, each individual plant. So I'm missing that, really missing it. So I'm hoping this is successful. And we're gonna keep starting seeds. We're gonna fill every crack, every crevice that we can. In fact, these two trays are more watermelons. If these sprout and get their first set of leaves, I'm going to plant them over here around the banana circle. I just have to control these little hellions here. Look at that. They don't sound like chick chicks anymore. I see you. You lose your mama? Yep, they lost their mama. 
Oh, they'll cry. You should hear this. <laughs> They're getting bolder and bolder, so they wander further from mom, and mom keeps on trucking. She doesn't wait. Oh, she's calling them. Here you see them. There they go. She's calm. She's all the way over here, though. Good job, mama. Guys, these chicks, <laughs> they're a buff Orpington, um, Plymouth Rock, or Bard Rock, whatever you want to call them, mix. And they are very cute. None of them look like Mama, which is hilarious. But she takes wonderful care of them. In fact, she chases the guineas away. The guineas want to get in the same feed that I feed the chicks and her. <sighs> look at them all go. <laughs> there she goes. We're still waiting. Our other broody hen has not hatched a chick yet. And we're starting to get a little concerned because the eggs have been in there 23 days now. But here's the problem. We got other hens laying in the nest and then the nest gets too full and they kick eggs out. And we found several eggs that had been partially developed. And unfortunately at this point, we're not keeping any eggs out of that coop. We're putting them all in the compost because we just don't know if they're safe to eat or not. Cause we don't know how long they were underneath that hen. So we're not taking the risk. We're just composting them and we have plenty of eggs from this coop and the chicken tractor. So we're not worried about it at all. I guess we want those baby chicks more than we, more, yeah, blah, <laughs> more than we need the eggs. Look at this. This is what I'm telling you about hay. Do not put hay in your garden if you have other alternatives. Cause look at this guys. This is a blanket of hay. Look at how green and lush it looks. It's pretty, I mean, it's beautiful. It's great for her to bring her chicks, chicks in and let them work in here. This is lots of good, healthy green forage for them. And you see, she's working at that little clump over there. But this is what happens with hay. So at some point, if the chickens don't clean this up, I'm going to have to mow it. Ew. <laughs> it's too hot to be mowing, guys. Uh-uh, Smokey. Don't you dare. Bubbles, watch that cat. See if we have a confrontation here. Watch that cat, Bubbles. I don't mind if Bubbles puts the cat in his place because he is very young yet. He's just a year old and he is full of himself. He, he's more interested in playing than eating chickens because he's a well-fed cat, but he's a great mouser. So will he cross the line? I hope not. Because if he does, mama's going to whoop his butt. He respects her. Look at that. He must have had his butt whooped at least once by now. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. There's never a dull moment here. God bless and have a great day.